Let's get right to the attorney for former President Trump and legal spokeswoman Alina Haba joins us. Okay, it's so great to have you on the show, Alina. So the news on former President Trump facing off against, it's nice to see you, facing off against special counsel Jack Smith at the D.C. appeals court hearing. What's your reaction to the news that judges are skeptical of Trump's claim of immunity? So first, let me tell you, as an attorney that's been in that situation, you have no idea what the judges are going to do. I have left court sometimes thinking one thing, and they come out with the other. Secondly, let me be clear. Immunity, absolute immunity, is called just that on purpose, and because the case law says it, it's a very simple fact that all presidents are granted presidential immunity within the scope of their employment, within the outer perimeters of their employment. I've argued it many times. The hypotheticals that were given today are just that. They were hypotheticals that do not relate to President Trump. Our team did a great job arguing, and I think that it's a very simple decision that if it's decided wrong, if those uh, skeptics are correct, uh, will have to be taken up. But I don't think that'll happen. Uh, This is really simple. And you have to remember, Liz, and thank you for having me on this very important issue. Presidents have to be able to speak without fear as the president and act without fear as a sitting president of retribution, both civilly and criminally. And what we're seeing is absolutely that. They like to call President Trump a person who's going to have a retribution campaign, but that is exactly what they are doing to him. It is exactly what they fear is what they've done themselves. They don't want you to look at their behavior, so they accuse him of it. And now they're trying to stop him because they can't beat him in the polls. It's election interference at its finest. The fact that there are so much footage me sitting in court next to the president is so sad and such a demise of the American justice system. And today I can tell you that presidential immunity, something I've argued and won many times, has been something that has to be upheld and should be upheld. It is clear cut. I think we made that clear and it is very important or it's going to be a slippery slope for every president, not just President Trump. All right, stay in that for a second. The only Republican presidential bench appointee on the panel said immunity doesn't let Trump violate the the law, but he was never accused or convicted of insurrection. He was impeached. Well, there's a debate about double jeopardy here, but when you talk about the scenarios the uh, Jack Smith's team was bringing up in court, you're saying they do not apply to this case. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is very, let me put it in a different way for everybody to understand. President Trump has not been charged with this. Let's be simple on that. But they are going to try and bring out charges that have nothing to do with anything he said. He said, go peacefully and patriotically. We know what happened that day. We also know he was still the president. But they are trying to bend and twist every single rule. The only person that does not want the laws to apply to them is Jack Smith. And let's not forget also, Liz, the Supreme Court just shut him down because the only urgency they have is the 2024 election. And they said, no, 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 Jack, you're not rushing this decision. You're going to go through the appellate division, and you're going to have to go through the normal method that everyone is, because we know we're probably going to have to end up in the Supreme Court. But it is not because the law is not on our side. It is because we have politically motivated justices, AGs, DAs that have no business in this country. So if you lose at the appeals court level, it goes to the Supreme Court. Now, let's turn to this story. This new complaint from co-defendant Mike Roman that Fulton County DA Fannie Willis and a prosecutor she hired should be removed from the Georgia 2020 case for misconduct because of personal monetary conflicts of interest. Now, Lena, the allegation is Willis allegedly abused her authority and taxpayer money by giving her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, a high-paying special prosecutor job. He got paid allegedly $654,000 since January 2020. They then used that money to travel around the world on lavish luxury vacations to Napa, Florida, the Caribbean, on Norwegian and Royal Caribbean cruises. Now, the court filing alleges Fannie Willis herself committed racketeering. The thing she's prosecuting Trump for, also honest services fraud. When you saw this, what was your reaction? It goes back to what I just said before, Liz. They accuse him of the exact thing that they do themselves. And that is what they do. Look at the shiny ball. If Fannie did, in fact, hire somebody that she was having an affair with or dating, whatever it was, somebody in the private sector, then puts him on her team and has taxpayer dollars, your money, 
your money, okay. not not anybody else's, to pay it, then you've got a serious ethical problem and your case has got a problem with political motivation, which frankly I believe it had anyway. We'll see you in that second because both parties reportedly didn't, and they're not denying the relationship, they're reportedly going to answer to this in court. The allegation is Fannie Willis and Wade have an incentive to prosecute Trump because they are benefiting and profiting at the expense of taxpayers by giving him a lot, you know, a, a high pay to pay for their lavish trips. But the court filing alleges Georgia prosecutors are coordinating with the Biden White House to prosecute Trump. That prosecutor, Nicholas Wade, met at the Biden White House in two separate eight hour long meetings before they indicted Trump in late November 2022, and then with the White House counsel in May 2023, and Wade charged Fulton County taxpayers two grand for each meeting at, for, at the White House. Your take on this? If they are true, they will probably be disbarred. The, why do you say that's that? That's my take. That's your take. So who would... Who would well, first of all, well, there's... So, well, they have to be taken up by the DOJ, right? Is that going to happen? No, D DOJ is not the one that disbars you. It would be the Office of Attorney Ethics. So there's many levels of things you're talking about. The state, about. the First Georgia all, State Office. Yeah, the Georgia State Office would do it. I'm talking about the ethics board that regulates attorneys' misconduct. Got there's it. that level, right? Then, Liz, you're speaking about a prosecutorial misconduct targeting an opponent, a political opponent, and political motivation. My answer to you on that, Liz, is let me be very broad. This is something we are not just seeing in Georgia. This is something we are seeing in New York with D.A. Bragg, with Letitia James. This is something we are seeing across the board. And every age, Jack Smith works for, works for the attorney general. Who does the attorney general work for? The Biden administration. This is not any kind of uh, rock. This is not rocket science. This is just basic. Americans can see what is happening. It is racketeering. If you look at it, that's not him. That's them. Again, it's not him. It's them. And they're going to keep trying to tear him down because they are afraid because he will clean it up. We have Soros backing finances from private sector, fri private individuals who hate Trump. We have people now using taxpayer do dollars to go on vacation, charging back so they get taxpayer dollars for meetings. It is corrupt at its highest level, and I hope it is revealed. And if it is true, they got a serious problem, and the case is definitely tainted. Elena Haba, Trump attorney, thank you so much for joining us. Come back, okay? Thank you, Liz.